Hello, wonderful people. It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about aortic dissection, and we compared between Stanford type A and Stanford type B. Which one is more dangerous? Type A, of course. Then we talked about coarctation of the aorta. Then we talked about constrictive pericarditis in its own video. Then we talked about cardiac tamponade in detail in its own video. Today, let's compare between constrictive pericarditis and cardiac tamponade, because these two diseases have many similarities, but also many differences. Constrictive pericarditis, I have a very thick calcified pericardium around the heart. It's hard as a rock. As in cardiac tamponade, I have fluid accumulating in my pericardial sac, also around the heart. Both of them can lead to what? extra cardiac obstructive shock with hemodynamic instability, hypotension, tachycardia, etc. Please smash the like button, subscribe, and let's get started. This is my cardiology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Next, Cosmal sign versus pulses paradoxes. Cosmal sign is a phenomenon on the right side of the heart, namely the neck veins. As for pulses paradoxes, it's a phenomenon on the left side of the heart, namely the blood pressure, not the pulse. That's a misnomer. It's also not a paradox. It's actually exaggeration of the normal phenomenon. Cosmal sign is when I breathe in, I get jugular venous distension, which is not normal because normally when I breathe in, my neck vein should empty, not fill with blood like this. This is the cosmal sign. As for the pulses paradoxus, well, normally during inspiration, there is a drop in my systolic blood pressure by less than 10. But in this case, I have drop in my systolic pressure upon inspiration by more than 10 millimeters of mercury. So it's an exaggeration of the normal drop in systolic blood pressure, and this happens to the blood pressure during inspiration. Look here for Cosmal sign. On the right side, I drew a big circle. Why? Because the jugular venous pressure is getting bigger when I breathe in. But look here for pulses paradoxes there is diminishing of the systolic blood pressure during inspiration. That's why I drew a smaller circle. You can download these doozy notes on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. Remember that both cardiac tamponade and constrictive pericarditis can cause obstructive shock. First, we'll review constrictive pericarditis very quickly, but if you want the detailed discussion, it has its own separate video. Then after this, we will review cardiac tamponade, then we'll compare between the two. Constrictive pericarditis is a chronic pericarditis, such as if I have chronic tuberculosis, or after surgery. Not recent surgery, but remote, distant surgery, way in the past. It takes a lot of time for the fibrosis, calcification, and all of this gunk to take place and to be significant enough to cause symptoms. Let's review. Well, constrictive pericarditis, my heart is surrounded by a very thick pericardium. It is thick, it is calcified, it is hard as a rock which means less blood will be able to enter into the heart, which means less input. If there is less input, there will be less cardiac output. And if there is less cardiac output, there will be less blood pressure because blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. So if cardiac output decreases, blood pressure will decrease as well. When blood pressure decreases, there is something called the baroreceptor reflex. The brain will send its sympathetic fibers to raise the heart rate and to constrict vessels. The sympathetic raises heart rate by stimulating beta-1 receptor. And the sympathetic increases the resistance by constricting the vessels through stimulating alpha-1 receptors, beta-1 receptors, beta-2 receptors. Next, remember that the blood could not reach the heart because of the calcified pericardium. So what's going to happen to the pressure in the right atrium? It will keep building up because I could not relax and accept that blood. Why couldn't you relax? I'm surrounded by a thick pericardium. So central venous pressure, which is the pressure in the right atrium, goes up. How about the pressure in the left atrium or pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? This too goes up because this left atrium is still surrounded by this thick calcified pericardium. When it's thick and calcified, it is constrictive. And this is everything we'll learn about constrictive pericarditis. I have very thick 
pericardium. It is calcified and hard as a rock. And instead of hearing lub dub, I will hear lub knock because I'm knocking against the calcified pericardium. This is decreased cardiac compliance and decreased cardiac filling. Less input equals less cardiac output and less blood pressure. And then the baroreceptor will give me tachycardia. If I have low blood pressure and tachycardia, this is called hemodynamic instability, which is a sign of a shock obstructive shock in this case. I can get positive Kuzmol sign and pulses paradoxus. If you do chest x-ray or chest CT scan, you'll see the calcified pericardium, like a thick border around the heart, well determined and well demarcated. And this is called the water bottle sign. The water is the heart, the bottle wall is the thick pericardium. Water inside a bottle wall. EKG, low QRS voltage or low QRS amplitude because the calcified pericardium is getting in the way between the electrode on the patient's chest and the cardiac muscle. If we do echo or cardiac catheterization, I'll find equalization of the pressures during diastole in all chambers. On neck veins, there is the infamous square root sign. There is prominent X descent and prominent Y descent. And this is very important. This prominent Y descent is called Friedrich's sign. And this Y descent will be absent or very diminished in cases of tamponade. How can I treat this? You gotta remove this thick calcified pericardium by pericardiectomy. Next, let's review cardiac tamponade, where I have lots of fluid or fluid accumulating very quickly around the heart. To tamponade is to tamp or to plug or to reduce, and this is the blood pressing on my heart. What happened to these parameters during cardiac tamponade? Well, let's talk about this. Filling pressure or the pressure needed to fill the heart goes up because I have to overcome all of that resistance caused by the fluid around the heart. How about stroke volume? If there is less preload to the heart, i.e. lower input, there will be low output because of low stroke volume. And how about blood pressure? When cardiac output decreases, blood pressure will decrease because blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. As for this cardiac output, it equals heart rate times stroke volume. So when the stroke volume decreased due to decreased preload, what happened to cardiac output? It also decreased. And what happened to blood pressure? It also decreased. This is a state of shock. The bare receptor reflex will work to try to increase the heart rate by stimulating beta-1 sympathetic receptors and increase the total peripheral resistance by stimulating alpha-1 sympathetic receptors. I am trying to raise the heart rate and raise the TPR to bring the blood pressure up and back to normal. Since we have fluid around the heart, the right ventricle and the left ventricle could not relax to accept that blood. So all of that blood will pile up into the right atrium and left atrium respectively. And that's why I have elevated central venous pressure and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure respectively. This is the right atrial pressure. This is the left atrial pressure. What's going to happen to the cardiac index? Well, the cardiac index is very similar to the cardiac output. It's just more fair. If you compare my cardiac output to the cardiac output of Michael Jordan in his prime, you'll find that the cardiac output of Michael Jordan is way higher than mine, giving us the illusion that I have heart failure, when in fact, I do not have heart failure. So why is my cardiac output lower than the cardiac output of Michael Jordan, even though both of us are normal? Because he has a bigger body than mine. His body surface area is greater than mine. So if you divide my cardiac output by my body surface area, and if you divide Michael Jordan's cardiac output by his surface area, you'll find that both of us are the same. We have the same cardiac index, even though we do not have the same cardiac output. So cardiac index is more fair because it takes into account my body surface area. But since the cardiac output decreases here and my body surface area did not change, Therefore, cardiac index will also decrease just like the cardiac output. How about the mixed venous oxygen? Well, this goes up in distributive shock as in sepsis. But since this is obstructive shock, SVO2 will actually decrease. Why? Because there is less blood pressure and there is less perfusion to the tissue to begin with. The cell is receiving less oxygenated blood. So the veins will have less oxygenated blood too. Moreover, when the cell is receiving less blood pressure, the cell will take its time to grab as much oxygen as it can 
from the arterial side. So when the cell grabs all the oxygen from the artery, it will leave less oxygen in the vein that comes afterwards. And that's why SVO2 decreases. Cardiac tamponade could be caused by trauma, aortic dissection, ruptured of the free wall of the ventricle after myocardial infarction, post-surgery, pericardial effusions, etc. Don't forget the back striad of jugular venous distension, hypotension, and distant muffled heart sounds. Do not forget the electrical alternance on EKG and the collapse of the right ventricle and right atrium on echo, as well as IVC, inferior vena cava, plethora. Why? Because I have tons of blood in the inferior vena cava. Now to the best part of the video, the comparison. Constrictive pericarditis versus cardiac tamponade. History. The patient with constrictive pericarditis probably has TB or disseminated coccidioide or after radiation or distant remote cardiothoracic surgery way in the past. However, cardiac tamponade is more acute. If it's a surgery, it's a recent surgery, not remote. Trauma, acute, myocardial infarction, acute, etc. Because cardiac tamponade is acute, it takes hours to days only. But constrictive pericarditis is a very chronic tuberculosis. Radiation exposure, years later. So, it's months to years. Which one is more likely to have friction rub? Of course, cardiac tamponade. As for constrictive pericarditis, this is a very calcified, thick pericardium. Its two layers will never rub against one another with all that calcification, so the friction rub is non-existent. In constrictive pericarditis, there is deep X and Y descent on neck veins wave. How about in cardiac tamponade? There is no Y descent. Because Y descent means what? Emptying of the right atrium into the right ventricle. When the right atrium tried to empty, it found out that we had tons of fluid around the heart, so it could not empty into the right ventricle. And this is a very important distinction. Cosmal sign is more common in constrictive pericarditis, way less common, almost absent in most cases, in cardiac tamponade. As for pulses paradoxes, less common in constrictive, but more common in cardiac tamponade. Next, some imaging. Well, imaging here will show us calcified thick pericardium, the water bottle sign. But here will show fluid in the pericardium. Let's do echo. For constrictive pericarditis, there is significant change in transmitral blood flow. That's the left side of the heart, blood flow across the mitral valve. And this change happens with variation in respiration. As I breathe in, breathe out, there is significant change in transmitral blood flow. Why? Because every time the left ventricle tries to relax, it hits a wall. Constrictive calcified pericardium. In cardiac tamponade, echo will show collapse of the right ventricle and right atrium because all of the fluid around my heart. There will be plethora in the inferior vena cava and shift of interventricular septum from the right side to the left side because the right ventricle is trying to adapt by pushing the septum towards the poor left ventricle, which will lower my blood pressure, of course. And this is causing what? Pulses paradoxes, of course. Both of these diseases have equalization of pressure in four chambers during diastole. Let's answer the quiz of the previous video. What's the name of this physical exam finding? Look at this. Every time I breathe in, what happens to my systolic blood pressure? It drops, which is normal. However, look here, how much did it drop? It went from 120 systolic to about 100 or less systolic, which means it dropped by more than 10. Here it dropped by 20 millimeters of mercury. This decrease in the systolic blood pressure by more than 10 during inspiration is called pulses paradoxus, which is the answer to this question. Remember that pulses paradoxus is neither pulses nor a paradox. It's not pulses, it's blood pressureous. And it's not paradoxus, it's an exaggeration of a normal phenomenon. The next question was, please list five diseases that cause all of the following together. Jugular venous distension, hypotension, and pulses paradox. I'm not just going to give you five, I'm going to give you seven. Ready? Number one, cardiac tamponade. Number two, Constrictive pericarditis. Number three, pericarditis with effusion. Next, restrictive cardiomyopathy. How about a right ventricular infarction or RV infarct? How about biventricular heart failure? And last, we have lung diseases like pulmonary embolism, 
as well as COPD and asthma exacerbation. So here's cardiac tamponade, here's constrictive pericarditis, here is pericarditis with effusion. Then we have restrictive cardiomyopathy, we have RV infarct, we have both of my ventricles failed. Then I have pulmonary embolism and exacerbation of COPD or asthma, eight causes. Quiz time. Suppose that you suspect cardiac tamponade. Now, what if I told you that the same patient has bacterial pneumonia and or empyema? Does this make the likelihood or the probability that this patient also has cardiac tamponade higher, lower, or the same probability? Comment below. Do you want to learn about cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, obstructive shock, hypovolemic shock, septic shock, etc.? Then download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. It will also teach you about angina, myocardial infarction, many arrhythmias, ARDS, and much, much more. To learn about the dioxin, the diuretics, antihyperlipidemics, antiarrhythmics, antihypertensives, and antianginal medications, download my cardiac pharmacology course. I help you understand and pass exams. There are more than 300 premium videos available on this channel if you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.